Workshop topics. Fitting a MIFID quick change tool post and mounting a drawer under the bench to hold ancillary equipment for the MIFID. First of all though, the unboxing ceremony. And that was it. The quick change tool post assembly is in a plastic sleeve. I thought it was a bag, but it's not, it's a plastic sleeve. And loose in the box are these two Allen bolts. There's another one in there somewhere, and there it is. Here is the tool post assembly, and just for a change, it's really nice. The general finish is good. On some tool posts that I've had in the past, the finish has been very, very rough. But then again, that is what I would expect, because this wasn't cheap. My only extremely tiny criticism is that the label isn't the same size as the recess into which it fits. But never mind that, it's time to fit it to the lathe and see what it looks like. First of all, I'm removing the nut and the large washer from the previous tool post. Really, all I need to do now is re-tighten the nut to hold the tool post securely in place on the top slide. To prevent the nut from marking the tool post, I fitted a washer in between the two. And now if I want to rotate the tool post, I just slacken off the nut, rotate it and re-tighten it, which is a pain because it needs a spanner, which probably won't be accessible at the time. Here's a shot of the quick change tool post with a couple of the fittings in place. Some quick change tool posts come with a lot more fittings than the two that come with this one. I'm not bothered about that. For this small MIFID, I only need two holders anyway. This MIFID will only be used for very light duty jobs. Things like parting off can be carried out on one of my other lathes. I've removed the nut and what I'm doing at the moment is stacking some more washers so that I can see how many I need for this lever to be in the correct place when it's tightened. I need more washers than this. With just two fitted, the lever fouls the tool post holder fittings. I'm going to make a special washer once I find out the thickness that I need to make sure that the handle clears the fittings and ends up in the right place, which is pointing towards me, or at least the right hand side of me. Once everything works, all I need to do is measure the thickness of the group of washers. In the end, I made two of these special washers. This allows them to slide over each other so I can get a good tightness on the handle. All I need to do now is fit the handle, and here it is, the job's completed. Now, of course, I have a spare tool post, and here it is. This is the one that was fitted to the lathe when I bought it, but I really hate this type of tool post. With this tool post sat on the top slide with four tools in it, it's only a matter of time before I cut myself. I thought I may as well put the old tool post back in the new tool post box and amend the text to say tool post instead of quick change tool post. Previously, I mentioned about the quality of finish and machining of some of the tool posts, like on the end of this tool holder, for instance. This old tool holder is from my Smart and Brown lathe, and I couldn't help but smile when I looked at the state of the tool in this tool holder. I sold my Smart and Brown lathe to a friend of mine, and he's very much a beginner, and this was one of his early attempts, I think. The Smart and Brown has a lot more inertia, everything's much heavier. And if you get it wrong, the inertia carries on smashing the tool to pieces. This is a commercial carbide tip tool, and the tip is long gone. Now I know why my friend was pleased to sell me the lathe back. This is my welding helmet visor thing. It was sent to me along with a very good quality welder by Machine Mart. What I'm doing here is having a look for some random pieces of rusty metal because I want to do a video all about using my new ultrasonic cleaner and I found plenty of rusty pieces of metal. Welding is something that I'm not particularly good at yet. I need to practice a bit more, but it is great to have the right equipment. I fabricated a pair of runners using four pieces of steel. Here they are, and two of the pieces of steel are slightly thinner than the others, which forms a channel into which the drawer can slide. Professional welders and armchair welders, please look away now. I fastened the two pieces of steel bar together just by using a series of tack welds, and this will be more than strong enough for the job. Here you get the idea. All I have to do now is screw these up underneath the underside of the worktop on which the MIFID is sat and the drawer will slide in and out easily, I hope. Yes, it seems to work fine. Not as smooth as a kitchen drawer, but a lot stronger. Quite pleased with my attempts at welding fabrication, it's now time to populate the drawer with useful things that I will use on the MIFID. The box in the middle is a bit too tall, 
This is actually the chuck box, so it doesn't want to go in here anyway. I'll probably use this drawer for the tools, such as this parting tool, that I won't actually be using on the Myford, but at least I know where it is. I thought it was a good idea to put the heavy stuff at the back of the drawer, and the heaviest parts are a spare cross slide and the fixed steady. And that's it for this episode, I just need the chip tray to arrive back from the powder coaters, and the Myford job is finished, and I'll be able to start using it. Everything seemed to turn out quite well today. Sometimes it's good to do simple jobs. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.